Tatiana Carrier, joined by Pete Hammond, our movie line film critic. This week, we're going to be discussing Oblivion. Doesn't seem right. We won the war. Now we have to leave. Well, Oblivion is Tom Cruise's latest movie, and it's sci-fi. It's in the spirit of uh, a lot of different science fiction movies you may have seen in the past. But this is the most jaw-dropping, visually stunning movie of its type I've seen since Blade Runner. I mean, the visuals are amazing in this movie. It is from Joseph Kosinski, who did Tron Legacy. So he's really into this futuristic world. And he used to be in architecture, and you can tell because he's got a great eye. Uh, this is a movie that may be a little convoluted in the plot for a lot of people. It's very hard to follow. Uh, even people at the premiere where I saw it were scratching their heads and somewhat going like, well, did that happen or what did that mean or what did that mean? But Universal doesn't want us to give you any spoilers here. So I can't really tell you all the good stuff that happens at the end, but you got to stick with it and really pay attention to this one. I've been watching you, Jack. You're curious. What are you looking for in those books? Do they bring back old memories? But the thing is, even if you can't figure out what the hell is going on in this movie, it is stunning to look at. There is something every step of the way. Oddly enough, it reminded me most of a movie called WALL-E, the Pixar animated film. And it's, it, it's set at the end of the times of Earth, basically. Earth was destroyed in 2017, and this is now six decades later in 2077. Tom Cruise is one of the last survivors, and he's basically living above Earth in the clouds in this special kind of house. Uh, and he goes down and he, uh, he uh, fixes the drones, which are there, which are very important for the uh, uh, survival of what's left of the human species. And so he visits Earth and goes to all the monuments that are all, you know, knocked over, like the Empire State Building and the New York Public Library. And it's quite a vision of, of a post-apocalyptic uh, Earth here. And of course, there's a big uh, enemy uh, here called the Scavengers, and they are the aliens who, uh, who were trying to destroy us all. But the, uh, the humans won, but they really didn't win because they used all the nuclear bombs. That's the basic premise. It really goes in interesting places after that, though, and it's kind of hard to explain. But Tom Cruise is really good in this. This is one of his best performances ever. I, and, and it's important because you're really empathetic uh, towards this character. He plays Jack again. You know, his last movie was Jack Reacher. He's Jack Harper this time. He likes that name Jack. This is a different kind of role for Tom Cruise. He's done a cut sci-fi in the past. Minority Report is one that I saw that I liked a lot. Um, but I think um, this movie could do well. Uh, it had a very good reception actually at the premiere, even though some people didn't know what was going on. And Tom Cruise, what a trooper. He was out there on the red carpet for three hours. He greeted every fan, he did every interview. This is unheard of for a star to be the first one to arrive. The premiere was supposed to start at 7.30 in Hollywood. He got there at 5.15. What other actor have you ever heard of that did this? It doesn't happen. It doesn't, I've does done it? the carpets before, it doesn't happen. You're lucky if they even speak to you. Yeah, well that's because I think he's really invested in making this a hit and making all of his films a hit now. He's had a little rocky time in the last few years. And so, you know, Universal executives were saying we would work with him again in a minute. I mean, in a minute, he's the most cooperative actor they'd had. And, uh, and so that, that was great. Um, and this movie actually opened internationally before it hit America. It opened uh, a week before. Um, because uh, it's got all those elements that appeal uh, around the world and they're hoping to get the buzz and, and get the jump on Iron Man 3. There are four, check it, five survivors. They are human. So Pete, is this a go or a no? Well, if you're fans of science fiction and, and you're fans of Tom Cruise, it's definitely a go. If you have a hard time following this kind of stuff, you might be lost in it. But I would say overall, it's a go. Thank you so much. So Oblivion is a go. That's all for us this week on Movie Line. Make sure you guys subscribe and also tune in every Wednesday for more Movie Line Picks of the Week.